Okay, let's try to uh, remember these uh, formulas and also try to remember this uh, graph to, to see uh, how this is working in, uh, in practice. I will now show one numerical example which is described in uh, problem uh, 28 in the textbook uh, 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 on page uh, 76. So, um, that's it. And here we have a mountain park, and we are uh, looking at uh, at patrons or, um, or or visitors of the of the park uh, for six months in uh, in uh, January uh, in uh, 1993, the sixth first month of 1993. Uh, and first, we uh, should just try to uh, draw a graph of the six data points and assume that January is uh, period number one, February two, and so on. And then try to look at the graph and try to estimate the coming, uh, the, well, the best estimates for the B and the A values in, in the trend line. And then problem B, uh, we should compute the exact values by using regression analysis. And in C and D answer, what are the forecasts op uh, obtained for July through December 1993, or which means the six coming periods after the periods uh, well, which we use for, for uh, as the historical data for estimating the A and B. So that means we should calculate the value of the trend line and continue the trend line to find a forecast for the coming periods until uh, December. Uh, and at last, comment the results and uh, specifically how confident would you be about the accuracy of the forecast that you obtained. So we will come back to the answers for, for these uh, questions when we have found the exact data. So first, try to plot in the numbers in the graph. So we have now six months, and let's make a graph out of this. And then we have the first point, which is uh, at. Uh, <coughs> well, we need a graph from. Uh, let's see, from up to three thousand. And then we have six data points here. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. So, by plotting the values into the graph, we can see that uh, January 133, which is below here. In February, 183, approximately this value. And then 200 and, uh, what is it, 85? Yep, 285, which is slightly higher, but still quite low in this graph. And then it will increase to 640 in April, up here, and uh, 1876 in May. Then you will have a quite large increase here. And in June, 2550, up here. So now we have these six data points, and we should try to estimate the slope and the intercept from the graph. Okay, we clearly have an increasing trend from low value at the start and to very high values at, at the end. So, what would be something like this? Here, maybe? Seems like the a value, which is the uh, interception of the uh, trend line and the uh, demand axis, will be negative, maybe minus 200 or something. And 
the increase from one period to the next period according to this trend line? Well, maybe not easy to say, but maybe a three, four hundred also there. So let's now just make a guess. A minus two hundred and B three hundred. That's a just a guess by looking at and trying by uh, by I and trying to estimate uh, the values of the trend line here because we should now use these data points to try to find the trend line which best describes this uh, uh, this uh, data point here and the increasing trend okay then try to use these formulas to identify the exact values of a and b well, we need to make a table, months, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we have the exact demand for each of these period, which is 133, 183, 285, 640, and uh, 1876, and at last 2550. This is the demand. And as we remember, for calculating these variables, the SXY, we also need the sum of I multiplied by di. We can well very easily find the sum of these four numbers here which is 5667. This is the sum. But to find this value we need the sum of i multiplied by di which means 1 multiplied by 133 which of course is 133, then we have 2 multiplied by 183, which is 366. We have 3 multiplied by 285, should be 855. 4 multiplied by 640 should be 2560. <coughs> 5 multiplied by 1876 should be 9380. And at last, 6 multiplied by 2550 is 15300. And here, summing all these numbers together, we get a total of 28594. So, now we have found some of the variables necessary. And we can also, quite easy, <coughs> identify the average value of D, which we need here to find the value of A. Of course, the average value of D is 5667 divided by 6, which should be 944.5. So let's now look at these formulas here and see if we can find these numbers SXY and SXX and then it should be easy to identify the exact value of the gradient B. Uh, SXY should be Uh, we have the formula shown here, so I will not repeat that again. N multiplied by the sum of i di. N is of course 6 multiplied by this number, 28,594 plus N, which is 6, no, not plus, of course, minus. N, which is 6, multiplied by 7, 
divided by 2. 6 multiplied by 7 divided by 2 should be 21. Uh, and multiplied by the sum of the demand, which is 5,667. Which means that the value of SXY should be 52,557. Minus should be there, 52,557. This is now value of SXY, and we can find the formula for SXX shown to be n to the power of 2, 6 to the power of 2, which is 36, <laughs> multiplied by 7, multiplied by 13, 2 multiplied by 6 plus 1. So here, 36 multiplied by 7, multiplied by 13, and divided by 6. Minus um, 6 multiplied by 7 divided by 2 to the power of 2, which means that the value here should be 105. If we commit all these calculations here. And then the B value is the SXY divided by SXX which is 52,557 divided by 105 which means 500 point 54. The B value, the gradient of the trend line should be 500.54. <coughs> and which is well, a bit higher than our eyeball estimation, but still this is the mathematical value which is best for the trend line which, which best fits to these six data points. And now when we know this one, it's very easy to find the value of A. Just use the formula here, the average of D, 944.5, minus uh, B, which we have found to be 500.54, and multiplied by n plus 1, divided by 2, 7 divided by 2, which means that the value of A should be minus 807.4, which is a bit lower than our estimation here. But now we know the values here for the trend line. And we can see that uh, the trend line can be written like this. The actual demand or the demand according, this, this is not the actual demand of course, but let's make a hat there because now it is the demand or the value of the trend line for each particular period T. The actual demand is the measured values here, but this is now the corresponding values on the trend line, which is not the same as the measured values. But to find this trend line, we can use the A value, which is minus 807.4 plus the value of B, 500.54 multiplied by the value or the, the, the T value, the period number. So this is now according to the calculations here by using the least square method to find the line that best fits to these uh, uh, measured, six measured values. Then we have identified the line which starts here approximately at minus 800 
and we can try to put in 6 multiplied by 500, which is approximately 3000 minus 807. This means that the end point of the line at this point will be approximately 2200. So the trend line will go more like this. And as we can see, the data points will vary around the trend line like this. Uh, so now we should make a forecast from July to December and it should be pretty easy to find these numbers. July should now be uh, t equal to, to 7. So we are at this point. This is the well, end of June and now we want to make a forecast which continues this trend line. So put in value 7 into this formula. 7 multiplied by 500.54 minus 807.4 will give us 2700 something. Approximately here. And it will be very easy to put in another number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 for the coming months, we have the formula. It is very easy to find and calculate the expected demand for any other month or any other period until the, uh, the future, where we expect that the trend line will continue at uh, the same uh, rate, to the same gradient. So, let's rather have a look at uh, this Excel sheet. We don't have to make all the calculations on the blackboard because we have uh, Excel or any other uh, spreadsheet which can be used here. <coughs> and as usual, I will also upload this uh, uh, this Excel sheet on uh, on Fronter after the lecture. Lecture here, we have the six measured values. We have di and i multiplied by di, just like we found in the columns here. And here I try to calculate SXY and SXX also just what we, we did here to find the values of A and B. And here are the formulas with cell references in Excel to the particular numbers we are using. Here is the sums, here is the average and so on. And by using cell references, we can also find the values of A and B. And now it's very easy if, if we actually found out that, well, this number was wrong, we can exchange it and everything will be updated. Or we can put in another value if we have a similar problem for another park or any other similar <coughs> situation. So the values here are now the regression line by using A and B in the formula for a straight line. And then in January, we ended up with minus 307 around here. And these are now the values on the trend line for each of the six periods. The end point of the line here is 2196. This <coughs> is that point. It's not the same, this is very important, because this is what many students do wrong when they are trying to, to calculate. They use the last value of the demand instead of the measured value or, or the calculated value of the end point of the line. These two numbers are not the same. This is the last measured value, but this is the end point of the line for the last period. And then, Look at the graphs here, which is also, uh, this is the sixth first month. We see that the graph ends, uh, yeah, uh, the, the straight line fits pretty well, as good as possible to the six data points we have. But when we now increase and rather continue this line, 
we can see that it will continue into the future here. This is the same numbers as we have found here. We will increase by the value of b for every time period, from period 6 to 7 to 8, 9, 10, uh, and continue to period 12. So according to this model, the number of visitors to this park in December will be 5,199. Which might not be a very good estimate if we try to think logical on this. Because visitors to a park is a well, typical, quite typical, uh, uh, it will be seasonally dependent. And we can usually assume that there will be more visitors in the summer than in the winter time. So here, using a trend-based method like regression analysis might not be good if you are looking uh, all, all over the, the full year or ever, even further into the future. But still, uh, this is a method which can be used when we have a situation where we expect to have a growing trend. But trends do not continue into for, forever. They, they need to, to stop at some time and they need to be adjusted at some time. And of course, when you get new data points, we might have some more information to try to see if this is a, uh, a trend which will, will continue. Uh, or it, it, we have to adjust the trend, which we will see in the next method we will have a look at. But anyway, this is regression. Uh, regression analysis try to find the line or the values of A and B, the intersection point with the demand axis, and also the B, which is the gradient or the slope of the line. Try to identify these numbers according to the what you have, uh, the data points you have uh, in the historical data points you have, and try, try to identify the numbers and. Uh, and find a formula for the trend line. But now we will look at another method which I just mentioned. Uh, it's called the double exponential smoothing and uh, double exponential smoothing, there are several methods based on, on this principle, but we will look at one particular method called Holtz method, where we still have the smoothing constant we saw with the single exponential smoothing for uh, used for stationary series but now we will adjust or develop this method to be able to use it in uh, in uh, wh where you have a trend uh, present and you expect that the trend will continue for well at least a, a period into uh, until the future So, uh, this, uh, the PowerPoint files does uh, not have much information about this Holtz method, but uh, it is described quite good in, in the textbook. But uh, here at least, double exponential smoothing, where Holtz method is only one example, can be used to forecast when there is a linear trend present in the data. And the method requires separate smoothing constant for the slope and the intercept. When we looked at the single exponential smoothing, we had only one data point which was updated every time we got some new data. But now we have two variables, one which describes the slope of the, uh, of the graph or, or the line, and another one which uh, describes the intercept, which uh, uh, well, is similar to the end point of the line I just showed you on the, uh, on the regression analysis uh, graph. 
So, here, by this double exponential smoothing called Holtz method, we have two smoothing constants. One is called alpha, which is uh, described as the importance of the value of the series, and another one called beta, which uh, describes the importance of the value of uh, uh, of the the gradient or the the, the slope of, of the line. So this describes the intercept, and this describes the the slope. And then we have a formula for the. Uh, well, what the, we call the value of the intercept of the line, which we can describe as the S. So the S of T will now be equal to the alpha value multiplied by the previous uh, the demand. <coughs> uh, not the previous demand, the same demand. Uh, D of T. Because what we now have is a graph looking like this. We have different data point. We are maybe at this point of time. We have identified some kind of trend line. We might have used regression analysis to identify the trend line. And then we want to continue the predictions for the future by using Holtz method, which might be a better method, an easier method to, to update, and also are able to uh, adjust a bit uh, better when you have new data than the regression analysis. Uh, like moving averages, regression analysis, if you are calculating all over again when you get a new data point, it will have the same weight for all the data points in used in, in uh, uh, in the in the history uh, as the data for for uh, identifying the values in the method, but the exponential smoothing will, according to these two smoothing constant, will be able to uh, give higher importance to more recent data than to older data. So here we have this. S value, which we are now trying to, uh, to find a formula for, which describes this point, the end point of the line. This is now <coughs> time period T, but as we also saw in the previous example, we might have an actual data point here, which is higher or lower, which is at least different from the S value, which is the intercept of the trend line at the current time, the period number t. So here, this s value will be updated every time we get a new value in the, uh, in the historical data, a new data point. And it's found as the alpha, the intercept smoothing constant, multiplied by the current demand plus 1 minus alpha. And multiplied by the previous demand, uh, or no, not the previous demand, the previous value of the intercept, the S, which means S of T minus 1, plus the value of the gradient in the previous period, which also can be described as the previous forecast. Because in t period t minus 1, we were at a point here, and we made a forecast for the next period, which might have been not necessarily this particular point, but a point which seemed to be the, the best approximation for the demand, according to the data we had in the previous period. And now we want to update the uh, the values of this uh, intersection point and, and the slope according to the newest data. So here we have a formula for the 
intercept, the S value, but we have a similar formula for the gradient, which can be found by using the other smoothing constant, the beta value, multiplied by the difference of the intercepts, the S of t minus the S of t minus 1, the current minus the previous uh, intercept point, the difference between the trend line value in the current period and the value we had in the previous period. And plus 1 minus beta multiplied by the previous gradient. So these are now the two formulas to be used to update the intercept or the value of the series, the current value of the line describing the trend, and also the g value, the slope of the line, how much it will increase or are expected to increase from this period until the next period. And to make a forecast, we can now use these two values to say that we want to make a forecast from period number t, the current period, until a period called t plus the Greek letter tau, which can be one, two, three, any number of period, um, periods until the, the future. And the new forecast will then be, it will start from the S value, the intercept point of the <coughs> line here, and it will add the tau value, which is the number of periods until the future we are going to predict, and multiplied by the gradient value. So if we have a value of the gradient, which is similar to what we can see in this line here. We can predict until the future to say that uh, we expect that we will, for the next period, we will have the gradient described by the value g. It will continue here to this point. <coughs> and if we are going to predict two periods into uh, the future, we will continue with the same gradient. But what will happen then? If we have predicted this value, and suddenly we come to this period and we realize that what we get is a demand which lives here. This is the new measured value. We didn't have the increase according to the trend like we expected here. Then we need to update. And first we need to update the value, the S value, and the S value, series value, will be updated as uh, the alpha value. Still the alpha and betas, they have a value between 0 and 1 according to the importance of the last um, the, the last uh, measured data point compared to uh, compared to the last uh, forecast or the last uh, value of the uh, of the uh, series here uh, or, the, or the last forecast which is the previous value of the series plus the previous value of the gradient so now if this one is much lower than we had expected, or lower or higher, or it will uh, differ from what we had forecasted, we will multiply the new demand by the alpha value, and we will multiply the previous forecast, which is shown here as the previous value of S plus the previous value of G, which will be this number, because S was here and G was the increase from one period to the next. So this is now the previous forecast. 
This is the same as the forecast for period t when you vary in period t minus 1. So also here the value of the series will be updated with a relative importance of the new measured value and a relative importance of the previous forecast. And with a smaller value than we had expected, then the line will be different. It will be more towards this. So the new S point, the new intercept point of the line, will in this case, with a lower demand than, than the, the forecast, will be adjusted in the direction of the new measured value. And when we have a new value of the series from here, we can also update the gradient, what is expected from the previous, uh, from one period to the next period. Because this S of T calculated here, we always need to calculate S before G. Then we have the difference between this number and the previous S number which was this one, still we have an increase, increasing trend, but not as much as we actually uh, expected in the previous period. So here we can see the difference between the current and the previous value of the series multiplied by the beta smoothing constant and add the previous value of the gradient to the importance of m 1 minus beta previous value of the gradient described the expected increase from the one period to the next, but now we found out that the actual increase was lower, and then we also need to adjust this g value. So here we have the formulas which should be used, and we don't have this line which we used in regression analysis, but we actually have only two values. We have one data point which is the current value of the series, and we have a value of the gradient. And when we get new data points, we need to update each of these variables, the series and the gradient. Then maybe in the next period again, now we have a S value here, and we have a gradient, which is described as the increase here from one to the next period. And then suddenly in one more period, we get some new data point, which might be, well, might have a very low demand here, which maybe indicates that we are uh, moving from an increasing trend and maybe to a decreasing trend. Because we now we need to update and we can see that our estimate would be here according to the values we had in the previous period, but now we ended up here at a very low value. So we need to adjust in the direction of the new measured value. And at some point you might then find out that an increasing trend like we thought we had here might turn out to be a decreasing trend. So I will continue next week with uh, this and then we will also look at a numerical example of this HALTS method. But uh, as mentioned you have got your assignment number one, and then you should use the first method I presented on, on trends, which was the regression analysis.